Hello and welcome to a scary, scary episode of the MBS Show. Ooh, I am your host, the scary and spooky Norman Sanzo. Ooh. Also joining me today is Silver Quill. I can only make my voice this high by hitting myself with the sun don't shine. A lot. <laughs> Ouch. You okay? I pray for death. <laughs> don't die. Oh, look, there's a ghost here. <laughs> Also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. I am the ghost of Brony's past, where for once I'm actually here. <laughs> Yay! Fear Yay. us! <laughs> uh, I'm uh, alive! Yay! Or not. No, I'm a ghost. I will haunt your dreams! Oh no! Our dreams will be nightmares. Ooh, so scary. Uh, but anywho, for this Halloween special, we are going to do a Patreon request by myself, Lag, and he wants us to review Elvin and the Chickmuck meets the Wolfman. So, yeah, from what I understand, this movie came out in 2005? I may be getting the facts wrong, but still, um, this is one of the early 2000 movies, and yeah, um, I don't know what to say. Like, what do you guys think? Let's go for Silver. Well, it's a fun, but just sort of their movie, in my eyes. The The funniest thing is that my favorite character in this whole thing was Dave. <laughs> I'll go into detail on that, but I enjoyed him far more than the Tripmunks in many ways. And so, the whole time, it's, it's trying to build this mystery of, oh, who's the Wolfman? Who's the Wolfman? And then you find out who's the Wolfman, and he's like, oh, now I'm just disappointed. Meh. <laughs> uh, I know what you mean. It's like, ooh, look out. There's the wolf man. He's going to do something. Or is it? Oh, stuff. Uh, but, Sappy, what do you think? Now, I remember this movie growing up. Like, back in 2005, I was only eight years old. <laughs> so, I remember having fond memories but I don't remember much because I only remember it being on TV. But I remember enjoying it. I like the songs just fine. It was just an okay movie. All right, then. And as for me, uh, being a child growing up with Alvin the Chickmunks TV series and their first movie, it was memorable. Like, I highly enjoyed those like hearing the chipmunks sing and talk and whatever it is like it was just a fun days watching this one i knew i was setting myself up for failure but going in with an open mind making sure that i judge it for what it is and this movie didn't hold my attention it got boring at some part like i got bored literally i got bored and i had to pause the video, go down, make some snacks or make a sandwich or whatever it is, go back up and continue watching it. And to me, it didn't hold my attention. The songs were good. The... How do I put this? I won't say that the story plot was bad, but it was okay. It was okay. I don't know how to put it in more words like it was just okay but anywho how do you want to do this guys do you want to go scene by scenes or just teams because um we're not working with ponies here so the gallery is not available i think themes makes a little bit more sense just because scenes some of them are not terribly interesting yeah all righty then so yeah definitely so before we jump in Sappy, um, uh, did you recently watch this movie or you're going by pure memory? Pure memory. Oh, boys. <laughs> Ooh, this is going to be fun. Okay, from what I remember, what happened, uh, they're in a play. Uh, Alvin right. got booted because Stuff. he tries yeah, to... Yeah, 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 reason, reason. Okay, know. so uh, yeah. it's still fresh in your memories then. All right, so we'll go by teams and... Well, I'm going to say if you guys have not watched this movie, um, pause it here and go watch it. But yeah, like go watch it. It's, it's a fun um, movie. And 
let's go for the setup. Like, Silva, before we recorded, you mentioned something about watching this with your friends and riffing on it. So how was the setup? Well, here's the big thing we all recognize. This one, Alvin is, he's sort of a Dennis the Menace level of trouble. He's wild imagination, uh, trying to get into trouble. But usually, I remember the original Alvin and the Chipmunks, much of this stuff was driven by his pure narcissism. I mean, the dude was all about himself and his glory. Even the, uh, even the Chipmunks movie was about him proving he could outperform the girls. As a side note, 90% of the Chipettes are, well, I guess two thirds of the Chipettes are pretty, uh, pointless in this movie. Uh, true. Yeah. That. Yep. But either way. Uh, this one though, he's watching scary movies and so he's got in his head that all of his neighbors are monsters. <laughs> and so, uh, it doesn't feel quite like the normal Alvin of Alvin and the Chipmunks. And it gets even better when we get to Theodore. Okay. Yeah, to, to me, when you mention Alvin here, I, I feel like they try to modernize him, but I don't know. Like, I highly agree that Elvin here is a pure narcissist. Like, Blue Blood can give him a run for his money, or <laughs> him here can give Blue Blood a run for his money. But still, um, his ego is beyond, is way beyond, like. Comprehension. Yeah, let's just say that he will make a great president. But still, but still. Oh, oh. <laughs> Shots fired. A boom. The political scene has been set. <laughs> Everyone get your pitchforks. Uh, We're supposed to get along when talking about politics, but that is a lie. <laughs> oh, yes. But so anyway, um, Elvin here, to me, I, the, the voices here are on key to what I remember way back when. And yeah, it's there. Like I do remember a few things of the old and watching this, some, uh, like this came out in 2000. Well, the year 2000, and it was an okay movie, not that bad. But Elvin here is portrayed correctly. Like, I think they try to make, uh, try to give him development, like character development, like how he cares for his brothers and whatnot. And yeah, Elvin here is on point. I think it's been a while. Even as he tries to murder his classmates? Oh yeah, totally, totally. I mean, the thing is, if you're taking the limelight, I will I will kill you. Like, that spotlight's mine. You mess with my brothers, I'll collapse your skull. <laughs> yep. Aww. Yep, there's a thing there. <laughs> Sebi, what do you think of Elvin? Elvin! All I remember was he got mad at Theodore for taking the part that he was meant to play and that all he was obsessed about throughout the entire movie was getting monsters. Or not getting monsters, that sounds like a plot to Pokemon. <laughs> Anyways, um, I just remember him being so obsessed with, um, you know, catching the Wolfman that he almost just didn't care about his surroundings, I guess? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't like Alvin in this movie. Yeah, I, I can see that, like, from your, what... Eight-year-old point of view. Memory. Yeah, from your memories. Like... Eight-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember not liking Alvin. Same I forgot here. why, though. I've recently seen this, and going back on memory with the CG movie, I don't like Alvin. Like, I, I don't know why or what. Like, coming to the year 2000, they, his character is... Mm, I don't know, like, they really, really made his character egotistic. Like, I dislike him. Can't stand him. Mm -hmm. Well, let's be fair, he's always been the most egotistical of the bunch, and it was usually the driving force behind a lot of stories. True, that, that is true. I, I don't deny it, but still, it's one of those scenarios where it can it can get really, really annoying. Yeah. Although, thanks to Safi and her yes. comparison of catching all the monsters, like Pokemon. Oh, now no. I can only picture an episode of the Chipmunks where they're all playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> you know what? I, I Don't even joke, Silver. Don't even joke, because there's an up-to-date version of Elvin the Chipmunks, like, recently, and I I think it's there somehow. 
like oh, I, if I were to check online, it's probably there. So I, I dare not. But we're talking a lot about Elvin. What about his brothers? Um, what about Simon? What do you guys think? Simon, throughout the entire movie for me, I just remember him being like nothing but a know-it-all. You do bring up a good point because the thing is, Simon here is a man of science. He's been telling Elvin here that you should stop watching scary movies. That's what's influencing your fear. You should totally stop this. Monsters are not real until something happens. I, I don't blame the guy because he's the smart one of the lot. He thinks even way back when. To me, I attribute him to Donatello from The Turtles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he can't fight like a ninja. Well, he's, he isn't trained in it yet. Ninja, <clears throat> ninja. Rap, go ninja, go, go ninja, ninja, go. 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 I'm go gonna go, talk about this movie now. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Silver would rather talk about the, the trans, or not Transformers movie, the, the Michael Bay film than, than oh, this. I do that, not want to talk about the Michael Bay film. Seffy, <laughs> you bite your tongue, you slender young lady. Slender <laughs> lies. Hey. Didn't they do that though in that movie? What, talk about Transformers, the movie? No, the... I mean, um, in the, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that Michael Bay produced. Like, they're in the elevator doing that. Oh, well, no, they they did a musical thing, but we're now we're taking things truly off topic. <laughs> with, with Simon, Simon in this movie is wildly inconsistent. Mm-hmm. How so? He's always been the sort of the sarcastic roll his eyes at, at Alvin's schemes, and yet he has no power to control his narcissistic brother. Mm-hmm. But here's the here's the problem. First, Simon is committed to helping Dave expunge all uh, all monster stuff from Alvin's life. Which that was a pretty funny scene where Alvin is just having a nervous breakdown, <laughs> saying the walls are closing in yeah. because he has no he has no monster memorabilia. Yeah, and it, in, com- in comes Simon. Uh, to collect, and he knows all Alvin's tricks, all the hiding places he might keep little monster things. But then Alvin says, oh, our neighbor's a werewolf. And Simon goes along with him to research this, even accepting that Alvin has a monster handbook that should be given to Dave. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, is like, no, I'm done helping you with this. This is a wild waste of time. And it's like, dude, you're an enabler. Stop enabling. <laughs> well, the, the, the scenario there was there was a bet that they have. Like, um, if I do remember right, the bet was if uh, Elvin was wrong, he would have to admit that he was wrong. And, well, stop cold turkey, stop the whole thing. But if he was right, well, he's right. So on. So the whole thing is like, to me, Simon here was just trying to find the, what you call this, um, trying to find all evidence that he was wrong. Like, okay, get blood sample, get, uh, look for all the evidence that showed that he was wrong and whatnot. Which is, well, like you mentioned, uh, Simon here could be an enabler, but still, I don't know, I mean, to me, it made sense at the time, but, eh. Yeah, it probably did for me too. <laughs> but but here's the thing, he's he's never he doesn't stick to that bet. He doesn't ever disprove that the guy's a werewolf. He just says, Okay, this is done. This is stupid. You've bent my glasses ten times. Yeah, but I think the point changed when um Simon saw Teardor, well, spoilers here, uh, turned into a werewolf. Well that that ended it but for Good lord, that was like more than halfway through the movie, wasn't it? Uh, I yeah. guess. It it took for bleeding ever for them to actually get to a Wolfman part. Which, funny enough, in a in a movie called Alvin the Chipmunks Meet the Wolfman, this is more Alvin the Chipmunks pass the Wolfman in the street, say hey, hey, <laughs> and keep walking. Yep, uh, I'm checking yeah. the clock here, and the Wolfman part came, well, the first encounter of, well, not even the first encounter, Theodore just got bitten at the... 33 minute mark 
Out of a movie that is only an hour and 15 minutes. Yep, 77 minutes. I remember that happening, like, much earlier than, like, an hour... Than the 30 minute mark, though. Oh, Seppi. You, you were younger yeah. and time compression. Yep. Like, Seppi, I got it here in front of me right now. <laughs> like, there's no way for you to say, oh, it happened way back earlier. Nope, nope, it's in front of me now. And I'm looking at the scene too. <laughs> I said I thought. I never claimed it was. <laughs> it's okay. But, anywho, the, my point still stands that Simon. As they're still debating the existence of Wolfman, he seems to be like, Alvin, you're delusional. This has to stop. Alvin, I will go along with you. No, Alvin, I'm bored now. I have other things to do. Yeah. He really, his goals change based on what the scene needs rather than anything he, re- as a character. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And well, I mentioned Theodore. So yeah, Theodore, Theodore here is a character. He is the shy, timid one. Like, and he's so cute throughout the movie. Yep. That's until he's not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, until he turned into a big fat jerk. Big fat meanie, if you would. But apparently being a big fat jerk earns you the respect of bullies. And, oh, if we get, when we get to the supplemental characters. Oh, yeah. Yep. But, yeah, Theodore, Theodore is, he's so innocent. I mean, he, he gives Alvin this, this giant monster book, never doubting his brother's motives. And this is Alvin. Always doubt his motives. I think little bro here is like, oh bro, you, uh, oh whatever, I, I trust you. You won't uh, steer me wrong. He's the gullible type of character. I, I forgot who. I also really liked, uh, Theodore and Dave's dynamic, like, throughout the movie. Like, Dave's just so sweet in this movie. Like, when you think of Dave, all you think of is that classic Alvin line. But here he's actually kind of being a father, and it's great. Dave was my favorite character in this movie. I have to agree. Dave here is very supportive, and he lays down the law. If like if one of the chipmunks goes out of line, he'll scold them and treat them like a father. And <laughs> unfortunately for Alvin, he's the rotten one of the lot. So yeah, he's the only... He's always getting screamed at, always having to say sorry or whatever it is. And yeah, he's the problem child. Sounds about right. But Dave, I always remember Dave as, yes, for the Alvin, but also, and this is probably the most, I think he was the punching bag for the world. (laughs) I mean, he was the, um, he was the fall guy, the Pratt fall. Uh uh He was the comic relief. Exactly. But now, one, Dave is ripped. <laughs> that dude has been bench pressing. <laughs> you see him walking around. He's walking around in like slacks and a, in a skin tight t shirt. Like, yeah, I'm a single dad and I am buff. Okay, okay. I have to stop you there, Silver, because when you think about it, right? Uh, Dave here is technically quote unquote not the father. Because the chipmunks here are, well, chipmunks? The more you question it, the more it goes, like, out the window. Like, uh. Well, believe it or not, I actually, they actually did cover the origin stories and their actual oh mother my God. back in the day. But, but Dave is their uh, adoptive father. Yeah, I do believe that. I do. And he is buff. <laughs> in this movie, it's like, dude, you can grate cheese on those abs. Hey, well, okay. <laughs> Um, re- remember way back when, when Lauren made the ponies, like, she made it for kids, yet the stories are tolerable for adults? Remember that? Yeah. Well, now apply that mindset with Dave here. Like, the story was meant for kids, but mom will get a treat out of this. Well, okay, I think my whole, f- all my friends and I laugh <laughs> when Alvin mixes chemicals with the school, causes a nuclear... <laughs> explosion, a mushroom cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Dave just looks at the phone saying, don't ring, don't ring, don't ring, don't ring, don't ring. It rings. And we all laugh. We all agree that was the funniest scene in the whole movie. <coughs> yep, yep. What I'm trying just to get at is they did a better job with Dave here because he's just, he's likable. He's he's nurturing to the kids. He's firm but not harsh. Mm-hmm. He doesn't scream Alvin, which 
honestly, if we're talking about uh, parenting, that's probably not a good idea no matter what. Well, I think he does, but not to the extent like how the 83 series did. Uh, nothing, nothing can top the 83 series. Oh, yeah, that is true. But it was just... I really liked him in this movie. It's kind of disappointing that he got taken down by a flagpole or, or a light <laughs> or a uh, night uh, street lamp. Yeah, but here's the thing: like you mentioned about the explosion in the school. Like, okay, um, should we talk about the story now or still stick to characters? Because I want to stick to characters because Dave here is awesome. What makes him so awesomeness? Well, aside from the fact he's flipping ripped. <laughs> Like you mentioned before, Dave here is kind of the comic relief guy. And once he gets the phone call, he goes to the school. And if you notice, he sits on the itsy bitsy chair. Like, it's really tiny. Like, a kid's chair. And, okay, <laughs> that's one way to demean your character. And as the more he talks to the principal, saying, Oh, you don't look a day over 50. And the principal corrects him that says I'm 30 so he's like ouch Dave you're mm, you're you're a good guy but still mm." well when we get to the principal I'll have plenty to say about her poor guy can't take a break but once the principal brings Dave to the play room or the theater uh, he sees that a bully tries to pick on Theodore sorry yeah Theodore and he parental instinct gets in there and wants to well, protect Theodore, which is cool. But that's just me. Like, from what I saw, it was okay. But anywho, sh- should we head off to the secondary characters that we don't really care? <laughs> well, we don't, but they, they have such a strange impact on this movie. Well, <laughs> Eleanor was great. Yeah, like, okay. Um, that is all. <laughs> so let's go for the Chipettes, uh, the leader, quote-unquote. Who was her name again? Brittany, and all she wanted to be was a tree. <laughs> Brittany, all right. I will be the best tree. Uh, oh yes, with the with the line, I'm shake, I'm shaking in my roots. <laughs> oh god, but still, um, Brittany, she's forgettable. She's almost like Elvin, but I, I think friendship is magic has turned my perception of how to write characters like Brittany. Could have easily been rarity. From she's magic people did a good job. Not for Brittany here though. Ouch. Nope, she was pretty much pointless in this. Yep. Mm-hmm. But they have to because they need all of the characters. Yeah, kind of. And well, pointless character number two, uh, Jeanette. What do you guys think? Senpai noticed me. Really? Well, she did the makeup and that was it. Oh yeah. It's funny yeah. as the as the intelligent one, she was actually very passive in the whole affair. Ugh. Like uh, here's the thing: when I think about this movie again, like characters were poorly utilized. Like they could have done more. They could have done something. I don't know. But poorly utilized. Like the only top A character I can remember is Eleanor and that's because Eleanor here is being supportive towards Theodore because well Theodore's getting picked Eleanor's there to cheer him up and give him support and somehow Theodore here has a crush on Eleanor yay but that's she's so su- cute but it's mostly a damsel in distress relationship I don't care <laughs> they're still cute <laughs> Uh, but in all uh, honesty, if you think about it, um, the dental distress trope here only works near the end because at the very beginning you see Theodore is just getting beaten up. And talking about getting beaten up, the bully! Oi, what's his name again? Who cares? Uh, I just knew him as the bully. I'm tra- in fact, good lord, the genetics behind this child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, his name is Nathan. I, I just saw it. Like, Nathan, the bully. <laughs> okay, I know that you want to create a character who is evil and who is a bully, and he fits the stereotype. But <laughs> you have to remember that he is the stereotype. There is, there is no to say that he fits the stereotype implies that there that there are other parts that 
extend beyond. He is the classic bully. But okay, uh, yeah. Uh, that I do agree. I I, I, I I agree with you there, but I have to put an asterisk here. They're not in high school. <laughs> they're they're just in what middle school is it? I can't tell the ages of these things. There's, they seem to be stuck in perpetual puberty. <laughs> seem like Ash. Oh God. Oy. But yeah, like I, I'm just thinking, like they're in what um, middle school, something like that. So yeah, like Nathan here is rip buff. Like oh God, I, I forgot another movie that did the same thing. <clears throat> oh, probably a sports movie, comedic sports. Oh, but still, yes. Uh, Neo Yokio, no. <laughs> uh, but still, um, <laughs> Nathan here is your stereotypical bully. He fits the trope, a uh, big lumbering idiot with a heart of gold, I think. I don't know about the heart of gold part. He just, uh, oh, you've bested me in one combat, therefore I instantly respect you. Remember, kids, the surest way to win a bully is to beat them up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do what Silver said. He's he's wrong. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, but still, if people are actually taking that advice to heart, I I weep for the future. <laughs> yes, please, please oh, do. God. Mm. Oh, yeah. But anywho, um, with Nathan out of the way, we only are left with three uh, three other characters. Uh, and that is the, well, let's go for principal. Oh, the principal. Oh, gosh. All right, I will admit, also, also a funny joke when Dave says, oh, but you don't look a day over 50. <laughs> I'm 31. <laughs> uh, this is what, uh, taking care of Elvin has done to me. <laughs> but then her, her philosophy of theater, he needs to learn self-confidence, so I'm going to let this physical abuse and derision continue right in front of me. <laughs> Well, the, like, lady, you suck at your job. The, the reasoning is yeah. that she said that um, Theodore never reported in, so she couldn't do anything about it. No, no. If you see a bully physically assailing and harassing a kid right in front of you, one, that bully's not very smart. Two, you have an obligation to get involved. Yeah, it's... Believe- and no, I, I I don't accept that. Oh well, he hasn't to- he hasn't told me, so I shouldn't do anything. You can be proactive. You're you're have to discipline the bully as much as you do foster the timid child. The bully needs some guidance as well. So no, I'm gonna say terrible principle. I hope those nitroglycerin trucks she's driving in South America encounter an accident. Oh wow, silver. Oh, that's just mean. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, th- hey, she's Savage. the one who said. Well, she's the one who said that was a less stressful job than than managing Alvin, so... You Silvo, re- you- you're savage when you really want to be. My goodness. Yeah, well, I've, I've had bad teachers in the past. I figure... And I've had some wonderful teachers in the past. I'd much rather one move ahead than the other, let's just say. <laughs> All right, Dina. All right. Oh, my so, gosh. So if you'll call... If you'll pardon me, I need to call a fictional cartoon South American hit squad. <laughs> Oh God! Why don't you just call uh, the Suicide Squad? I think I'll call them Los Expendables. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's I don't think that's how you say expendable. But uh, still, um, Sappy, what about you? What do you remember of the principal? That's not a word. Ouch! Sweetie, <laughs> Bot, Sweetie Bot's gonna do something about that. But still, ouch! That's that's all. Sh- that's all she needs to know, though. Uh, really? That's, am, that's am, all you need to know. Am, am I the only one here who kind of, well, I won't say like, but tolerate the principle? Okay, I looked it up. My hit squad would be called Los Reempalaz. No, oh, <laughs> I can't even pronounce this. Reempalzables. <laughs> that's Spanish for expendables. All right. <laughs> Oh. Hmm. Spoken spoken by a guy who has no pronunciation skill. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm guessing I'm the only one who. Well, kind of. Yes. Yeah, alright, then. So, yeah. Uh, principal, not my favorite character, but still, she's there. That moment when the principal is your favorite character. Ah, it's not favorite. It's, I can pity her. That's the thing. Like, oh, poor girl, poor girl. Taking care of Elvin is not easy. Still. 
Uh, and okay, another character that I hate because he is the stereotype. Like, this is one of those things where I do not like the use of stereotypes here because it ruins a character. And that's the theater teacher. Who likes this table? Oh. I'm so flamboyant. You're dead. Oh yes, and what was the exchange between my friends? I think I think the theater manager is gay. <laughs> oh, you don't know that. <laughs> what, your friend, you, you watched the movie of Tristan or something? I just I just know my memes. <laughs> uh, where's Joey then? <laughs> what if your friends would be awesome? I would be bored. Uh, <clears throat> oh man. So yeah, Silver, what do you think of Sid Tier the teacher? Well, he is a, he is a complete stereotype of all things th- theatric. Uh, I, actually, of all the secondary characters, he's the most harmless. However, I can't say he made me laugh, but it's like okay, I see I see what his role is. He's not malicious and he's not doing anything to hurt the kids. So yeah, I'll roll with it. He's just sort of there. Yeah, true that. True that. Honestly, I, I wish I had more to say about him, but, you know, he's just there to get the Jekyll and Hyde thing going. Oh, yeah. Although, I will say this. I wish my school had that their budget. Whatever they're using on their theater program. <laughs> so jealous. So very jealous. It's just water, Silver. Just water. But it's bubbly, and it's got lighting effects, and a very realistically good stage. Yeah. And apparently an ocean drop-down background. <laughs> Uh, well, talking about the story, uh, well, I think we're forgetting one more character, but I'm gonna leave him for last because he's kind of the twist. So, story here is, it's almost Halloween, school's having a play, um, main lead character is Alvin because, well, he's the star of the show, but because of his obsession with monsters, got him into trouble. Dave, being the responsible parent here, um, kind of took all of his monster paraphernalia away. And since Theodore is having trouble in school, the principal decides to put Theodore as the main lead. Well, one part of the main lead. He will be playing as Mr. Edward Jekyll, was it? Well, let's see. Uh, Well, Theodore became Mr. Hyde. Simon became Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Mm. Jekyll and Mr. Yes, Mr. Hyde. Edward Hyde, I think that's his name. Edward Hyde, yeah. Yeah, but still, he becomes a insane psychotic murderous killer. And, yeah, uh, that's 180 to put on a character, a very timid child becoming a homicidal killer. Yes, way to go. So, once that's done, um, Elvin got his book thing from, well, in this day we call it online scam, but back in the days it was infomercial. Yay. So, bought stuff from Infomercial, it came, and that stuff is a book about monsters, which you can get online now, for free. But in said book, they came a fake pendant diamond thingy, and Theodore gave it to Eleanor, as a gift for appreciating her, yay. Like we said, they make a good couple. Ah, oh, they're so cute! <laughs> so, anywho, uh... Am I rushing here because I'm I'm forgetting scenarios here? I think that's the main thing I remembered throughout the movie consistently. How cute Theodore and Eleanor were, even though he was being a jerk. And I love Wait. how she didn't put up with it. That's not a word! Yeah, the the more jerkish she became, the less interested she was, and she made made it very well known to him, getting all haughty on him. So while this play is un- unraveling to the director's dismay, ah, I'm so flustered. It's it's like flames. Flames on the side of my head. <laughs> Meanwhile, Simon and Alvin are investigating their neighbor who they think is a werewolf. And said neighbor name is uh, Mr. Talbot. Talbot. Can we talk about him now? Yes, please. Let's do. Mr. Talbot. Yes, Talbot. Because if you want to talk about the twist of the movie, mm-hmm. there is, is the, none. There is no twist. <laughs> yeah, you just know straight up that yeah, this is the werewolf. Even when I was a dumb eight-year-old, I remember it. In all of this, yeah, that guy's definitely the werewolf, isn't he? <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, there is a twist. Mm-hmm. The twist is he's the new principal. Da, da, da. 
But honestly, um, I was with you guys uh, to a point where, okay, he's the werewolf, just admit it. But I was thinking that, oh, maybe he's not the werewolf. It's his quote-unquote brother could be in oh, there. God, like, no. maybe. Because it's the era, that kind of twist will happen out of nowhere. Ooh, there's Ex Machina brother. Ooh. But now, he is the werewolf. He couldn't control himself. Ah... So yeah, he went out hunting. And, oi, the thing about how Wellwolf works in this one is very, very confusing. Here's the funny thing. Usually in shows aimed at young kids, they make it also obvious that person A is the, is the criminal. Just so they could set up a, what a twist. This movie didn't even try for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their twist is he's the principal. They're just like, really? Come on, Shyamalan did better. Which one? Uh, pick Eddie. Ooh, the plants are trying to kill us. That's the <laughs> twist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about the bees? Oh, the bees. <laughs> oh, not the bees. Wait, that's the wrong movie, but okay. Uh, but still, <clears throat> yes, um, <laughs> this movie ain't going to win any Emmys or anything, but still, it's it's a fun, dumb movie to watch. Like, what else can we say? Go watch it with friends and take a shot for something. They made a defecation joke. Oi. That's unique. Yep. <laughs> then again, Alvin ate chipmunk poo in the CG movie. Oh. Yes, I've, gr- I've grossed you all out. <laughs> no, you mentioning the CG movie just... Uh, it's been 10 years. That movie didn't end well. I wouldn't know. I, I managed to not see it. Uh. Yay. Good I was a dumb you. kid. I was a dumb kid. So anywho, with this one, I let's let's rush through. The cure for werewolfism is that the victim bite the the uh infector. No no no. I, I think what it was trying to say that a werewolf biting another werewolf. So, you know, double negatives turn into positive, something like that. But two wrongs don't make a right. Not in this movie. I was just like, wow, okay, I guess I can understand that's the only way to really make this work. Oh, and I'm totally forgetting uh, Madame Rhea, mm, yes. who was fun. Oh, yeah, she, she, she oh, was yes. fun. She was a stereotype in all extremes, and my friend said, oh, she's a, is that a gypsy stereotype? It's like, no, no, I, I believe that is a Jewish mother stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Very, very uncomfortable talking about that, but at the same time, I was like, no, that's all she needs to go is to say uh, shalom or something. <laughs> Just like, what are you, what are you guys doing? But no, okay, with her character, I can understand that. Okay, she is a uh, infomercial host, so her character is going to be all over the place. So yeah, and with all her makeup gone, it's okay. I don't really mind it that much, but. Yeah, she's kind of the plot engine. Like, oh, I am here, so you know what to do. Oh, you need to bash Theodore in the head with a silver something. Make sure he dies in one shot. <laughs> Won't that kill him? Yeah, but it'll cure him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it will stop the suffering. <laughs> Holy. Mm. Uh. And would it kill you to give me a call after you're done? I mean, no, no one ever calls me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah, so anywho. Uh, uh, we near the end. Uh, chase scene and music. And talking about music, I'm looking at the wiki here, and I sing only three music for this movie. What? Oh, there's only three songs, and they're not even covers. They're just modifications. Really? And the pain... Those high pitched voices can bring. Oh yeah, like, oi. and in all honesty, the songs are not bad. They're they're not great, but they're not bad. But they could have done better. Like, uh, maybe ponies have spoiled me. Maybe ponies has spoiled me to a point where I enjoy the songs in cartoon shows now. Maybe something like Adventure Time or even Steven Universe. They spoiled me. Uh, maybe. But we can't all have adorable equines with pastel coats. Sometimes we have high-pitched chipmunks who run around and sing songs that make you a little screechy. Oh, God. 
And okay, I, I, I'm looking at the original movie here. That one came out in 87 with a running time of eight, 78 minutes. And the song here, well, it's a full soundtrack with what? 15 songs. Yeah, 15 songs. I, I just like the original one. That movie was good. That well, the songs, most of them just rang, We're monks out of mission! <laughs> oh, the pain. <laughs> Oh, the pain. Take me back to the thing. I want to watch the thing's head come off. Clear away. That was a freak. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. So, let's... You've got to be after kidding me. <laughs> oh, a silver was cursed. Yay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So, anywho, uh, let's, let's go to the final thoughts. Ay, ay, ay. Silver, final thoughts, please. Nostalgia. Non-nostalgia bitterness. <laughs> bitterness. Yeah. Actually, actually, the movie is mostly harmless. Oh, yeah. Totally. I, I do agree with you that. Pulling a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy here. Oh, by the way, I actually started watching that. The series or movie? Hit, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a fun movie, but read the books. The books are, are, are divine. Okay. Anyways, our final thoughts is we'd rather be watching Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy than this. Or John Carpenter's The Thing. <laughs> it's less frightening. Oh. <laughs> In the right ways. <laughs> uh, well, for me, like, it's harmless. It's, I won't recommend go watching it, but if you want to find out what we're talking about, go watch it. <laughs> uh, it's a recommend, not recommend kind of deal. If you're curious to torture yourself, go ahead. If not, Hey, it's there. Eh, you won't be missing anything. Your life won't be missing out on stuff. So, yay. Uh, but still, um, harmless movie and whatnot. It's there. Like, go watch it if you want to. Ugh. So, anywho, um, if you guys would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Uh, with every support, you'll get Early access to the review and discussion podcast, deleted contents, and exclusive. And there's an exclusive out right now only for the Patreon people. And that is me and a bunch of my friends talking about the recent My Little Pony movie. No spoilers. But just check it out if you want to know what we think. And with every support, you get a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I like to thank Lurker Cat. I'm Dracotorius, Starstream, and also Master of Light. Thank you, you guys, for the awesome support. And, well, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Not talk about Alvin and the Chipmunks, meh. Yes. Yay! No, we've, we've been a little discordant this review. Mm-hmm. Perhaps we should follow up with that with some discordant harmony. Oh, yes. I'll bring tea. <laughs> I'll bring the ginseng that can sing. <laughs> uh, next week will be Season 7, Episode 12. Uh, of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. But anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Queen! I am dead inside. <laughs> I hope we didn't ruin your childhood, Saki. We'll guys see you next week with another fun and amazing show of the BS show. See ya. We're blocks on a mission! Goodbye. Silver, I think there's blood running down my ear. Hello, darkness, my friend. <laughs> You've come to see me again. <laughs>